Hi, I'm Brian Pure, tutoring high school biology. Today's topic, basic ecology. Before we get into the big stuff, we'll need to know some of the background. And that's what this is right now. We're going to start off with levels of organization. Biologists like to organize things because things are usually pretty organized in nature. The smallest level we have this cell. The cell is the basic unit of life. Put a bunch of cells that do more or less the same thing together and you'll get a tissue. Take for instance a cell that has a lot of smooth endoplasmic reticulum. It'll be good at detoxifying things. Put a bunch of these kinds of cells together and you might get liver tissue, which of course if you put together you'll get an organ, the liver. The liver, of course, detoxifies things. A bunch of organs put together will go into the organ system. The liver could be part of the digestive system, as it helps detoxifying substances that are, might be harmful in your food. Put together a bunch of organ systems and you'll get an organism, things like me and you. Now a bunch of the same type of organism are no, is known as a population. This is one species only. If we take, say, any area of land and we look at it, a population will be one particular species. If we find a bunch of black bears there, that'll be one population. Even if they're grizzly bears, they're not part of the black bear population. The black bears are a population. We next move on into the community. This includes all the biotic factors of an area, all the living things. Now the grizzly bears are included in the community with the black bears and also the plants, bunnies, rabbits, deer. Then we can move on into the ecosystem. The ecosystem includes biotic and abiotic, non-living things. This could be the deer, the bears, and the lions, and tigers, oh my, and also all the non-living rocks, the soil, the sun, the weather. That's an ecosystem. Examples include different types of forests, such as jungle or deciduous forests, tundra, desert. That's an ecosystem. Put a bunch of ecosystems together, and you'll get a biosphere. Generally speaking, it's Earth, the planet. Keep those in mind and you'll do pretty well in ecology. A lot of it just comes back to levels of organization. Next up is the energy pyramid, which is a diagram that is pretty constant throughout all of Earth. This may look a little bit like the nutrition pyramid, but that's just because it's a pyramid. Okay, down here on the bottom level we have the producers. The producers make their own food, in other words, they're autotrophs. You can use that fancy word to impress teachers. This basically means plants. Grass, bushes, trees, these are all producers. You notice that this is also the thickest part of the pyramid. That means it has the most biomass. If you took all the living producers and lumped them together, it'd weigh more than any other level on the pyramid. I'm going to show you why in a minute. Let's move up the pyramid. We have the primary consumers. The primary consumers do not make their own food. They are heterotrophs. Anything above the producers, they're heterotrophs. Primary consumers will eat the producers. However, every time you move up a level in the pyramid, there's a 10% energy loss. That's why every level has less biomass than the previous level. If you call the primary consumers and weigh them, it weigh less than all the producers. Moving up, we get to the secondary consumers. See the pattern? The secondary consumers will eat the primary consumers. That'll be another 10% energy loss. The biomass of all the secondary consumers weighs less than the primary consumers. You could go still further to the tertiary consumers, and sometimes as far as the quaternary consumers, but generally not too much farther. Now, you could do all this in another type of diagram known as a food chain. Doubtless you've heard of these before. Let's start out at the bottom of the food chain. How about the sheep? The sheep eats grass. Not that impressive. The wolves will eat the sheep. But let's say the wolves are eaten by, I don't know, mountain lions. You see, there's a linear progression here, and now let's have the mountain lions be eaten by something. I don't know, how about Edward Cullen? No, that'll just make the next example more difficult. Well, let's just say humans eat mountain lions. Here we have a basic food chain. Sheep are eaten by wolves, eaten by mountain lions, eaten by humans. It's a very linear progression. But rarely does this happen in nature. Because where there are sheep, there might also be, I don't know, horses, which also eat grass. These also might be eaten by wolves. But then there also might be foxes. Foxes might also eat sheep, but not the horses. Mountain lions might also eat the foxes, but the mountain lions might also eat the horses. Energy webs show as many relationships as possible. Humans will probably eat the horses. Actually, 
they'll probably just eat the sheep. But they could eat the horses. And to be fair, mountain lions might eat the humans as well. And then, of course, there might also be eagles, which might eat the mice, which foxes might also eat, so on and so forth. You can keep building an energy web again and again and again. To recap, there are several levels of organization that biologists use to categorize things. At the lowest level, there are cells. Cells are the basic unit of life. Put a bunch of similarly acting cells together, you get a tissue. Put a bunch of tissue together and you'll get an organ, which performs some sort of function linked to what the tissue does. Put a bunch of organs together and you get an organ system. Put a bunch of organ systems together, you get an organism. A bunch of organisms of the same type, known as a species, are known as a population. Take any area, and a population includes only one species, such as just the black bears. The community expands to all the living things in a particular area, the biotic factors, all the black bears, grizzlies, so on and so forth. The ecosystem includes the abiotic factors as well, the rocks, the soil, the weather. The biosphere includes all ecosystems, or in other words, is planet Earth. There's also the energy pyramid. At the bottom of the energy pyramid are the producers, the autotrophs. These are just plants. They have the greatest biomass. In other words, if you took all the plants and weighed them, they'd weigh the most out of any level of the pyramid. Next up are the primary consumers. Anything that's not a producer is a consumer and is a heterotroph. Primary consumers eat the producers. Then moving further up, you get secondary consumers, tertiary consumers, quaternary consumers. Every time you make a step up the pyramid, it's a 10% energy loss. You can also draw food chains, which show a very linear progression of who eats who. The other larger diagram is the energy web, which shows a lot of things eating a lot of other things in a more accurate, if slightly more messy diagram. Alright, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Creer. See you next time.